Now, Miyazaki concretely had the main character thanks to Baby Fuki. But how about the whole image of the movie? Miyazaki always says there's a point when a piece becomes a real movie. That turning point came for Ponyo on June 5th, 2006. Until then, Miyazaki had been drawing numerous images on paper with pencil and coloring them, which we call storyboards. But suddenly, he starts taking some notes and constructing the plot. He starts brainstorming how the story develops. Documentary director Arakawa comments on the narration. Miyazaki's storyboard making has been stagnating. But that evening, suddenly, I was able to witness the birth of an important picture. Okay, um, I'll use more images from now to explain it. In the picture, Miyazaki is checking both sides of the drawing paper. Like this. While he does that, he somehow starts humming. Die wa cure by Wagner. He starts humming the music. Ba -ba -ba -bam, ba -ba 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 -bam. He plays the CD and sings while he flips his drawing to look at its front and back. Then he says, am I allowed to draw this? Then he starts grinning. On the other hand, he tells Arakawa coldly, why don't you go home? Which is strange, because the sun is still out and it's too early to go home. Because Miyazaki was persistent, Arakawa thought, oh, maybe he's in a bad mood and thought about leaving. But his creative nature told him, if I leave now, I'm not a director. Something is happening tonight. So instead of going home, Arakawa secretly continues recording from a distance by setting the camera a little far from him. Miyazaki is looking at his own drawings and for some reason he's laughing heartily. <laughs> Then he says, she's rushing to her guy. This is an incredible drawing. And somehow he looks satisfied. Arakawa narrates, I thought Miyazaki-san would start something important, so I stayed. Then Miyazaki starts a contour drawing with his pencil. Obviously, Miyazaki is not young anymore. He used to draw with the HB pencil. But it got darker and darker from 2B to 3B, and now he uses 6B because he doesn't have much grip. Still, he keeps drawing. While he draws, he says, scary, she's coming for Sosuke, she's coming. Then, he starts coloring the pencil drawing with watercolor. Arakawa senses something different from Miyazaki, who seems exceptionally happy while he draws. But he doesn't know why Miyazaki is so happy. So he asked, how can you draw so intensively? Miyazaki simply replied, I don't know, maybe because I'm listening to Die wa Cure. But he's obviously taking a step further on that drawing, because he usually stops after coloring the contour drawing with watercolor. But this time he starts using pastel crayons that his wife used to use back in college to draw on top of the watercolor. He even rubs it with his fingers to smear it. He has never tried it before. Someone trying a new art medium after turning 70 is quite impressive. So, look, right here. You see he draws over the watercolor surface with his crayon, then rubs with his finger to expand the stain. Miyazaki says, maybe it's the music, but I don't know why I'm drawing like this. Now, excuse me for the blurry photo. Here, what he says while drawing is scary. Maybe he's scared of his own drawing. Or his own creativity that allows him to create such a drawing. Or perhaps he's scared of Die wa Kure. Arakawa can't figure what Miyazaki means by scary, because apparently Miyazaki seems to be enjoying drawing. Arakawa just doesn't have any clue. Meanwhile, Miyazaki keeps drawing with the crayon. He draws and smears the sky as well as the waves. It means the main character makes her first appearance under a cloudy sky. It's very unlikely for a Miyazaki anime. It's cloudy. 
I can manage to understand the background with the rough sea, but the black clouds? Miyazaki even smears them with crayon. It looks like an apocalyptic world. Miyazaki is making it look darker and darker. And Ponyo's mouth? Look at her droopy mouth. Is this better? Ponyo is standing straight. And if you look closely at her face, you can see the corners of her mouth turned down. This is also very unlikely for a female main character. So you see the significance. On top of that, he goes back to his 6B pencil and starts adding the contour lines. The narration says he's emphasizing simple lines. That's right. He traces the outlines of the drawing with the bold pencil lines to emphasize the picture. While he does that, yeah, you see the subtitle that indicates the melody. He continues to sing Die wa Kure. He repeats this part. Crayon smear, crayon and smear. He does it over and over to stain the drawing. And he joyfully says, I can hear Die wa Kure in this scene. If you see his face, he's smiling. And he says, scary drawing. I've titled it, Ponyo Arrives. He says, the drawing is scary. Earlier, he just said scary, but now it's clear that it was the drawing that Miyazaki finds scary or the situation of Ponyo coming that scares him. Ponyo is coming for Sosuke. Then, what would it be like for Sosuke who invites her? Miyazaki gives a snicker and says, Poor Sosuke. He has to confront her. Miyazaki clearly describes Sosuke as a pitiful boy. The pitiful boy has to meet a girl who loves him and comes from this apocalyptic world that commands the dark sky and waves. What a pity. Miyazaki depicts Sosuke in the same context that he depicts Fujimoto, a man who embodies the eternal sorrow of being a male. While he draws, he can't hold himself from excitement and stands up. He just can't sit still. He gets too hyped up. And he goes, scary, no, not scary, cute. So he's trying to convince himself. It's a great line. Scary, no, not scary, cute. I was cracking up. His honest feeling is fear. But he's trying to tell himself, Ponyo has to look cute to the audience. He can't let them know how it's an essentially frightening situation. It has to look cute on the surface. That's why he's trying to convince himself. The image is now complete. Then he takes that drawing, looking so happy. Sorry, it's blurry. He says, I'll put this up somewhere nice. So he walks around the room, then finds the most distinguishable spot on the wall, space above the light switch near the entrance. He joyfully pins the drawings there and stares at it. He titles the drawing, Ponyo Arrives. This is it. I mean, this is how the drawing turned out to be. Pitch dark sky and pitch dark rough waves that transform into fish. On top of that, you see this half girl, half fish coming for his man. It's a horror or a fantasy movie where a monster comes from the underworld in search of a beauty. That's what you see in Ponyo as well. So he's taking the drawing of a monster arriving for the beauty and giving it a not scary but cute look. He tries to convince himself that it's possible. That's the kind of challenge Miyazaki is facing. Ponyo looks determined with her droopy mouth, the eyes looking far ahead, and the fist held so tightly, she even stands on top of a fish. It, it's really not cuteness that we see, but a scene from an action or a horror movie. Until this point, Miyazaki had been drawing dozens of storyboards. For example, he drew the initial sketches of Sosuke, Ponyo posing cutely, Fujimoto's ship, etc. Oh, and the jellyfish. 
But every time he finished the drawing, he said, hmm, this is not what I want. So things weren't going the way he wished. He keeps on saying things like, I'm not having the grasp on it. I'm escaping from something, but I'm aware of it. Uh, I can't do this. But when he completes this drawing, he's looking straight into the camera. He goes, it's that drawing, this one. Miyazaki says, that one picture says everything about the movie. He points to the drawings behind him, then explains. I've drawn quite a lot, but none of these do the trick. Why not? These are merely phenomena. But that one over there, that's the essence. It means that these drawings in the back are there just to explain the stories and settings. They are just illustrations of events. But if he chooses one image that explains what the movie essentially is, then it's that drawing, Ponyo arrives. After he finishes that drawing, he looks so relieved. In fact, he had a cigarette in his hand, but he hasn't smoked it yet. He was that focused, but now he smokes that cigarette looking very content. He says, I've finally drawn the essence of the movie. Finally, this day, he was able to visualize what he truly wanted. Now, this is a painting of Ophelia that he saw in London. A scene of her death. She's a character from Shakespeare's play Hamlet, who is carried along by the river, dying. While she dies, though, she sings in a fading voice. Meanwhile, she's surrounded by numerous exuberant lives which indicates the faint existence of life within the world of death. Miyazaki was deeply moved by this painting. And that's exactly what he wanted from the movie. Ponyo arrives is the first real image. Everything else is just an event. He had to wait until he drew Ponyo arrives to really visualize what the movie was really about. The climax scene of the first half of the documentary is where Miyazaki agonizes over his desire to produce the first true image but isn't able to, or his fear toward what he is about to draw. And how he starts singing Die Wakure when he's finally making that drawing, which is a contrast to his previous agony. Now, he looks like a playful old man doing something naughty. Many people say they didn't enjoy Ponyo compared to other works by Miyazaki. I was one of them. And I still am. I don't think the film itself is really that interesting to watch, but the documentary is interesting. So I advise you to watch the documentary, listen to Miyazaki say scary, no not scary, cute. Then you can see things from a different perspective. It's on TV, so folks record it and watch Ponyo again with the new perspectives that I taught you today. That's it for the free part. As soon as I get to the second